Hi. Anyways, as some of you may know that I have already made this video before, and unfortunately, it got 100,000 views. But it is unfortunate because that video sucked, for reasons we'll discuss later. But before we do, it's prerequisite knowledge time. Or, in other words, there are three things you need to know before we get started with this video. Number one, auto arms can be filtered to pick up only the item you want them to pick up by putting said item in the center of the auto arm. We are going to be doing that to literally every single auto arm in this build, so I thought it would be useful to point that out separately. Number two, this is a very efficient build because each nanocarbon alloy will only cost you six soil canisters worth of soil to get, which is so cheap considering we are talking about nanocarbon alloy here. And number three, there are four gases you need to craft nanocarbon alloy, and you cannot get all four of those gases on any one planet, meaning no matter where you build this factory, you're going to have to go to other planets to get some of the gases. Now, before you click off because that sucks, it actually doesn't. Because there are two things you need to remember about gathering gases in this game. Number one, they don't cost anything. You just have to run power to an atmospheric condenser and it will gather it for you forever for free. And number two, you can leave said atmospheric condenser on another planet and it will remain rendered in, meaning it will gather hundreds or even thousands while you are away, meaning you can bring it back all at once and get hundreds or thousands of nanocarbon alloy before you have to restock again, which is entirely acceptable to me. But as we all know, my last video on this sucked. And the reason that video sucked was because the build itself sucked. Nanocarbon Alloy Factory 1.0 was abysmal. There were three big inefficiencies with the way I built it that kind of just made the whole thing a little trash, honestly, compared to how we are going to make it today when I show off Nanocarbon Alloy Factory 2.0, which we'll just call NCAF 2.0 because that's a lot faster. So, NCAF 1.0, you know, the one that sucks, is actually right in front of me right now. And I want to point out real quick why it sucked, so that's what we're going to do in real time. My sensitivity is really low. Alright, there it is. Now, for those of you who don't care or didn't even watch the original video on this, I will put a timestamp in the description to just skip past this part where we start talking about the new build. But, I will try to make this brief, so if you just want to understand why this one sucks and why the new one's going to be better, stick around. But it may be a little confusing if you didn't see the original build. In the original build, we took scrap from this scrapper, and we wanted to share that scrap in several different directions. So this auto arm just puts the scrap on this platform, and then from this platform, several auto arms take so that the scrap will go in different directions. Now me, being the anti-genius I am, said, well, what if one of those auto arms starts hogging all the scrap? So I said, all right, we'll make some logic to where, you know, we'll use logic. We'll use delay repeaters and storage sensors to make sure that they all turn on at once after this platform's full, so that they'll all take an equal amount of scrap. Because I didn't, again, I did not want one auto arm to take it all so that none of the rest would have any. But then this guy came down in the comments and he said, you're stupid. Okay, he didn't say that. But he basically said, you're stupid because you did all this logic and actually you didn't have to because if one of the auto arms takes all the scrap, eventually it's going to run out of space. And so the other ones will just get to have it after that because it won't be taking it anymore. You don't need any of this logic. You just need the auto arms, which saves a lot of time. That guy's basically the main character of this video because that was by far the suckiest part of this build. And he uh, pointed that out to me. So we're going to be fixing that. Thank you. Thank you again, by the way. Really nice, actually. Actually, thank you a third time. Maybe even thank you a fourth. Well, nah. Just three. Anyways, a very close second for the worst part of this video is how we did trade platforms. Now, real quickly, I'm going to explain that with normal platforms, you know, you have like the, the chemistry lab, right? With this, if you want to automate it, you just press this little blue circle here and then turn it on. And then it will continue to craft whatever it can. If it has the resources, it'll continue to craft what it's crafting all by itself. The trade platform doesn't have a way to do that. You can't just automate it by using it because there's no blue circle down there that we can press to make it automatically take off when it fills up with scrap. So we have to do that manually. The last thing that sucked about NCAF 1.0, and this isn't really a big one, but it's kind of annoying, honestly, is the placement of the auto arms. It's just not good. I mean, a lot of this is like twisting up. You can't really tell where anything's going because everything's all twisted up. And at one point here, as you can see, if you've been paying attention, there's an auto arm. Not an auto arm, but like a place for the auto arm to place its stuff inside of this atmospheric condenser. 
Basically, what I'm trying to say is there's probably better spots for these. So I know this video is dragging on pretty long now, and we still haven't even shown how to build it in-game yet, but I want to make sure you know everything you need to know before we do that, and that includes one more thing before we show how to build this in-game, and that would be a resource list. Everything you are going to need for NCAF 2.0 is on screen right now. What things cost is listed beside them. That's not really the best way to see the entire cost of all this stuff, so now on screen you're going to be seeing that as a separate list. This is everything you're going to need to craft the stuff that you just now saw. And then, last but not least, the power requirement. You will need 132 units of power a second to power NCAF 2.0, but since that's a lot, you could just power it at half speed, and that would be pretty good too. But if you want to power it at full speed, I have a few options here I would recommend. 66 small solar panels, and 44 small wind. If those are active at the same time, you are going to get full power. And then, obviously, small generators, 66 small generators, which would not be practical at all before the tapper, but we have the tapper now, so if you use the tapper, 66 small generators would be good, or 15 medium generators, if you would rather go through the effort of getting those. It's going to be less setting up tappers and stuff. And, of course, you know, RTGs, which you would need 33 of, which is not cheap, actually. So, I could see why you wouldn't want to do that, but... Those are good options, I think those are pretty good presets for this, and so, with that out of the way, we can move on to actually building in CAF 2.0 once and for all. Anyways, in front of me you can see a giant flat space with a marked off region in the middle. That marked off region is how much space we need for in CAF 2.0, and the reason that matters is because we're gonna build. Because yes, I don't want this to just be a bunch of crafting stations spread out across the wild. I want there to be an actual structure here that's beautiful and to be looked upon. So if you don't know how to build like this in Astroneer, I'm probably gonna make a video on that in the future. It's actually probably gonna be the next video I make because I do this in almost all of my videos now and a lot of people don't know how to do it. So, you know, that's kind of important information, I guess, at this point. So definitely look for that if this video is more than like a couple of weeks old and it's probably already out. Oh, uh, but yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say. I just wanted this to look nice for the thumbnail, really. Honestly, I just want a good thumbnail. This is probably going to be in the thumbnail, but you already know that, don't you? Okay, I've built, and as you can see, this structure is grand. It's beautiful. It's glorious. Marvelous, one might even say. And as you can also see, we have already put together the entire NCAF 2.0 contraption right here, and it's beautiful. Those of you who saw the NCAF 1.0 video will note that this is much smaller than NCAF 1.0 because, again, I built it way more efficiently. This is much better of a design, and so we're going to get straight into this now. Before we get started on the details of how you're actually going to put this thing together, though, I would like to give you a quick overview of how it actually works. There are three sections to this entire build. The first section is right here in front of us. It's from the soil centrifuge to that large shredder over there. What this section does is, it lets us put soil into a soil centrifuge, and then that soil gets converted into scrap by the time we get to that large shredder down there. Again, we will explain that later, but that is what the first section is. The second section is from this auto arm right here, to these four trade platforms. And what this does is, it takes our scrap that we got from our soil, and it distributes it between these four trade platforms, which are set to automatically take off and trade for the items that we need to make nanocarbon alloy. Then the third section of this build takes the resources we get from these four trade platforms and it merges them in the appropriate ways using chemistry labs until we get to the last chemistry lab down here that will be the one that makes nanocarbon alloy. I hope that that makes sense, and so now we're going to go more in depth. Starting with the first section, of course. Now, again, obviously, it's just a soil centrifuge. We need to get something from the soil centrifuge that can somehow be turned into scrap. And the answer to that is going to be resin. So, what you do is, you scroll through here until you get to resin, and when it's selected, press this blue circle and press the green button. This means that every time your soil centrifuge fills up with soil, it will automatically turn that soil into resin. The reason we want resin is because we are going to be using a small printer to automatically craft that resin into small canisters using the exact same thing as the soil centrifuge, just this blue button. Make sure you are on small canister, blue button, green button, and then whenever we get resin from the soil centrifuge, we automatically craft small canisters. Now, as you can see, the small canister is being crafted onto a medium storage instead of just loose on the ground. You want to make sure that you do this, because when you are rendering in this part of your world, if the soil canisters are just on the ground, they will glitch into the earth and they'll just be gone and they can cause lag with collision and stuff, 
it's a mess. Just make sure that you craft your solar canisters onto the medium storage like I have right here and you can mitigate that. So now you have this medium storage with soil canisters on it. This auto arm is going to take those soil canisters and put it into the shredder to generate scrap for us. And so that's the entire first section. That is how you turn soil into scrap automatically. But one more thing I would like to mention that's pretty neat and pretty useful to know is that one small soil canister full of soil in the soil centrifuge here is going to equal one scrap in the end. So the conversion rate is incredibly easy because you know, it's just one to one. And so now it's time to explain the second section of this, which is just taking the scrap from the shredder and distributing it to these trade platforms. Something you may have noticed, though, is that we have a storage sensor on the very first platform that we put scrap onto from the shredder. The reason that is the case is because we need to fail-safe this system from when scrap gets backed up. And what I mean by that is, this storage right here will only fill up if none of these trade platforms can take scrap anymore because they're full and they're not back yet and they're not ready for more scrap. The reason we need to fail safe against that is because we are crafting soil canisters over here automatically with this small printer. And so if these small canisters can't be scrapped after they're crafted, there's just going to be a huge pile of them right here where the printer keeps on printing them. So with this switch here, we need to cut power to the small printer so it stops crafting those if this very first storage is full. So that's all we need with this. We just put it to full or not full and then run that signal to this switch so that the printer stops crafting soil canisters whenever we have no more room for scrap. As for how we distribute the scrap to these four different trade platforms, it's very simple. We just start with one platform that the scrap gets placed on then two separate auto arms take from that, splitting the scrap in two different directions. Then we do that again, so now it's going in three directions. Then we do that again, so now it's going in four directions. And then we run those different lines with four different auto arms to four different trade platforms, just like this. Now I know some of you are probably following along as I do this, so I want to explain right now what each trade platform is supposed to be trading for, right? These each have to trade for a different item, that's why we have four different trade platforms. The one on the very left here is trading for hematite, which is just iron before it's smelted. So that's iron. The one right here is going to be titanite, which is just titanium before it's smelted. This one is for ammonium, and the one on the very right is for graphite. So that's what those are trading for, if you want to know. And so now all we have to do is automate our trade platform to take off whenever it is full of scrap, so that we automatically get the resources that they are set to get. And you would hope that would be simple, right? With the soil centrifuge, we press the special blue button, then the green button, and then it will always get resin, because that's what we have selected. Same with the small printer. We want small canisters all the time. Blue button, green button, and now it's going to do that by itself. But for whatever reason, the devs have not done that with the trade platform. As you can see, no blue button, so no green button, so no automatic automation. You would have to sit here and do it manually, if not for the fact that I'm a genius. So I found a way to do this manually, so... We're going to dive into that. And disclaimer, this is not fun to explain. It's actually more advanced than you, than you would hope it would be. And, you know, hopefully someday. So check if you're watching this video in the future, like well after this is made. Maybe they'll add that. I would say they would. It makes sense that they would add the blue button to this sometime. So if this video is months old or something, just make sure there's not a blue button for the trade platform and you can skip this part. However, if not... Watch closely, because this is going to suck. Obviously, we need to use a storage sensor to detect when the trade platform is full, because there's not an automatic way to do that. So you would think, put a storage sensor on the trade platform and tell it to detect when the trade platform's full, then activate itself, right? Well, no, because this trade platform, for instance, is trading for graphite. One scrap gets two graphite, which means all eight slots are never going to be full of scrap. We can only put four scrap on the trade platform, so a storage sensor saying, wait until it's full, is not going to work for this. We have to find another way. Which comes to why we have it on a large platform B. It's on a large platform B because it can share with a medium storage. And so we're going to use a storage sensor on this medium storage to know when the trade platform is full of scrap. But how are we going to do that? Well... It works quite conveniently, actually, because this auto arm will choose to place scrap on the trade platform before the medium storage. So we can have a storage sensor say, if scrap lands on this medium storage at all, it means the trade platform is full. Then we can have that storage sensor tell the trade platform to leave. 
But unfortunately, so unfortunately, as you can see, it's more than just a storage sensor. We also have a count repeater, and then we have something going to this auto arm. It's a little more advanced than what I just explained. And so we're going to dive into that by simply getting rid of this, and I will show you as I set this up, how it works. First things first, this is what you are going to need to automate your trade platform. Obviously, the storage sensor. It is the main idea of how we're going to do that. And as you also saw, a count repeater, which is set to the default value of two. So just craft it and leave it alone and you will have it where it needs to be. What you didn't see before, though, is a button repeater. Why do we need that? Well, we're going to take its pin, put it on our count repeater, and then halfway activate it. And that's all we need the button repeater for, so get rid of it after that. You don't need it anymore. So before we talk about the count repeater and what it's for, we are going to take this storage sensor, and put it on the medium storage, and explain how it's going to do what we said earlier. Remember, we want it to say if anything, if any scrap lands on it, then it tells the trade platform to leave because the trade platform's full. But it doesn't do that on the default mode. On the default mode, this would have to fill up all the way for the trade platform to take off, which is stupid. So press F twice and we will be on empty or not empty so not empty that means whenever a scrap lands on this it is no longer empty so it will tell the trade platform to leave but there's also empty which will mess this up because when it becomes not empty there's a scrap on it and when the trade platform gets back it will take that scrap then the trade platform is going to get activated again because it became empty if that makes any sense Maybe you're not following, just follow what I physically do here and it will work if you don't understand what I meant by that. But the reason we need to do the count repeater basically is because when it's set to 2 and then we run the storage sensor to it, then run it to the trade platform, then basically the count repeater makes it so that only half of the inputs from the storage sensor are going to be put into the trade platform, right? Because it has to activate this twice. And so... That's how we're going to ignore the empty part. We do not want it to make the trade platform leave whenever it becomes empty. We only want to make the trade platform leave whenever it becomes not empty. That's what the count repeater is for. Hope that made sense. But again, if you're not following, just follow what I do and it will work. Now, as you may have noticed earlier, this storage sensor didn't just go to that count repeater. That's one of the things it did. So run it to the ground like I just did, like this. Then press F. Then you can make it go to the storage sensor like this and make it also go to the auto arm. What does that do? Well, it makes it so that whenever the trade platform is gone, this auto arm is not on anymore. And the reason we want that off is because we don't want the medium storage to continue filling up with scrap while the trade platform is away, because that will screw this up for reasons I don't feel like discussing. Basically, just do what I've done here, and it's going to work. And obviously do that for all trade platforms. Sorry. But at least maybe you'll understand it by the time you do it four times because you sure as dang don't understand it from my pitiful explanation skills. But fear not, my children. The most confusing part is well out of the way. Automating trade platforms is the monster of this video. So explaining this last section here, which is just how we use the resources those trade platforms get, is going to be much easier to understand. And the way we're going to explain that is by following each resource, basically, right? We have four resources coming from the trade platforms here. We are going to start with graphite. Why do we need graphite for nanocarbon alloy? We need graphite because with this auto arm, the graphite gets taken to this chemistry lab right here, which crafts graphene. That's one of the things we need for, for nanocarbon alloy. But in addition to graphite, we need hydrazine. How are we going to get hydrazine? Well, that's going to be with another resource we get from the trade platforms, ammonium. So that ammonium gets ran to a chemistry lab that's right beside the graphene chemistry lab, which is set to make hydrazine. And all we need for hydrazine is actually just ammonium twice. So this one's simple. We just need ammonium to run to this and we will get hydrazine. But oh no, we also need hydrogen. So on the same platform as both of these chemistry labs, as you can see to the left here, we have an atmospheric condenser, which with the special blue button that we so wish was on the tray platform, is set to automatically craft hydrogen. And since all of these are sharing a platform, basically, since this atmospheric condenser, the graphene chemistry lab, and the hydrazine chemistry lab are all sharing the same platform, we don't need auto arms for them to share their resources. They just have to be on the same platform, and now they will interchange, which means everything is going to go where it needs to be. This chemistry lab can now craft hydrazine because it got hydrogen from that atmospheric condenser, and whenever the auto arms are producing ammonium for us, that will come straight over here and craft it. Then we have our hydrazine, which will automatically go to the graphene chemistry lab 
because they're sharing a platform. Now we have graphene because we have both of the requirements. So I might have lied. This section might be a little confusing. I could see how maybe that was hard to follow. But I feel like, at least with a rewatch, which gives me more watch time hours and thus more money, uh, rewatch it, that will actually probably be easy to understand. Because like I said, just pay attention to where the raw resource ends up. Just pay attention to that. And hopefully it'll be somewhat easy to understand. Disclaimer real quick, you will notice there's another atmosphere condenser on the same large platform C as the other three stations we just mentioned. That's not relevant to them. I just put it here because that space was not going to be used for anything else. But yes, let's just continue to follow the resources until we get to nanocarbon alloy, like I said, and this should be fairly straightforward. Why do we need graphene for nanocarbon alloy? Well, we need it for titanium alloy. And so here is the chemistry lab that makes graphene again, as you can see. And this auto arm takes that graphene and puts it to this chemistry lab over here. And this chemistry lab makes titanium alloy, obviously. And we also need titanium, which brings us back to the raw resources that we get from the trade platforms. As you can see, straight back from here, right across, we have titanium. Which, by the way, you're seeing that all this lines up really nice. That's why it really matters, the order in which you have these trade platforms. Iron needs to be where it is, titanium needs to be where it is, and ammonium needs to be where it is, unless you have your own version of this that's better. Maybe you do, but if you're just following along, make sure those are in the right spot. But we have titanite, which is just raw titanium. It needs to be smelted, so the first thing it goes to is a portable smelter right here. And ignore the glow sticks, because they don't matter. And so recap, we have our graphene, and now we have our titanium, because it just got smelted on this portable smelting furnace that shares a platform with this chemistry lab, so it automatically comes onto it when it's done. Titanium, graphene are now gotten, so titanium alloy. And as you've probably already noticed pretty plainly, nitrogen, that's the last thing we need for titanium alloy. It's just right here, the atmospheric condenser that I pointed out earlier. This auto arm takes it to this chemistry lab. It doesn't look like that because it's facing not even anywhere near it. I just thought it looked cool that it was perpendicular. As you can see, it does barely clip the same platform that that chemistry lab's on. So yes, that nitrogen goes to this chemistry lab. Now we have everything we need for titanium alloy. But why do we need titanium alloy for nanocarbon alloy? Well, we need it for the nanocarbon alloy itself. As you can see, we have gotten to the end here. Titanium alloy is one of the two ingredients for nanocarbon alloy, with there being one other, which is steel. So this may give you the illusion that everything I just explained is only half of this, but it's not, because titanium alloy is actually just about as expensive as nanocarbon alloy, with steel being the other ingredient, which is actually pretty cheap. But how do we get steel? That was probably kind of creepy for you. Sorry about that. Hematite is what we were getting from this trade platform. It's raw. We got to smelt it. Portable smelter. Another auto arm takes the smelted version, iron, and puts it in this chemistry lab, which is, by the way, directly beside the chemistry lab that we do nanocarbon alloy for. So iron goes to the steel chemistry lab. And then once that steel is crafted, it automatically goes to the nanocarbon alloy chemistry lab because they're sharing a platform. Anyways. We also need, as you saw, carbon. I'm hovering over the wrong thing. We also need carbon for steel. And that's really easy to get now that the tapper is here. Which, by the way, tapper did not exist for NCAF 2.0, so... For NCAF 1.0. Ah, uh, anyways. Now we have the tapper, so... Technically, nanocarbon alloy with soil is a little bit cheaper in this version of it. Because of that, which is nice. But yes, the tapper gives us organic, which is raw carbon. We gotta smelt it. Portable smelter. Then another auto arm takes the carbon that got smelted puts it on to the steel chemistry lab so that we can make steel. Now, something you may note is that it's going to be able to place carbon on both of these chemistry labs, but there's nowhere to put it because this chemistry lab doesn't take carbon. It takes titanium alloy and steel, so it'll ignore the first chemistry lab and put it on the one we want. So we have carbon and iron only coming into this. But oh no, we also need argon. And that is not on the planet I decided to build this on. That's what I was talking about earlier. You have to go get some of them separately, so I'll show how that's done. And just to save time here in a couple of seconds, helium is what we need for nanocarbon alloy in addition to titanium alloy and steel. That's also not on this planet. So I put them both in the same spot back here. Since these chemistry labs are so close together, the helium and the argon are in the same place. They're simply back here in these canisters, and they run to their chemistry labs just from back here. Quite simple. And again, as I was saying earlier, you only need one of each gas for one nanocarbon alloy. So if this is full, we're going to get 160 nanocarbon alloy before we have to go get more helium or more argon. So, I mean, it's, it's a steal, really. I know it sucks that you have to go to another planet for this, but not very often, and you'll have more nanocarbon alloy than you really need before you ever have to do it at all, actually. But yes, I never really made it clear that 
Yeah, like we were done after we described the iron and the carbon. That's what it is to have steel. That's what it means. We have steel now and argon back there. Now we have steel. And then steel automatically comes over here. The titanium alloy, which we crafted earlier, gets taken by this auto arm to the nanocarbon alloy one. Now we have nanocarbon alloy because we also have helium back there. And so that's the entire build. Store it however you want, but I will say, with a build like this, it's pointless if you're not making a ton of it. So don't go any smaller than a large resource canister. I would have gone bigger with the extra large resource canister. But uh, I made the roof too small in this building. It wouldn't fit in here. Anyways, yeah, that's the entire build. So if that's all you wanted, then get off of my video, punk. But some people did say in the NCAF 1.0 video that they would like to see this thing in action. That's actually a desire people have. I truly did not expect that, honestly. I did not expect that because uh, for me, it's like... There's really not much to see. It's just a bunch of auto arms and stuff. But hey, some people wanted that, so here comes the time lapse. Didn't feel like finding background music for this portion of the video, so that's what brings us back here together today. But I do have one important thing to say, actually, and that's that I said it takes six soil canisters of soil to get a nanocarbon alloy with this system. And that's true, but not for the very first nanocarbon alloy you get from the system. And that's because the scrap has to fill up the different assembly lines for the different trade platforms before you'll actually get your first nanocarbon alloy. But after you get your first nanocarbon alloy, every six soil canisters worth of soil will get you a nanocarbon alloy. And I already know there are going to be people who didn't see this section who are getting all mad. Oh, world class jerk, I put 10 soil canisters into my system and it didn't even give me what you said it'd give me look i don't care you can suck my foot we can suck my foot together that's why i have two